I've never made an obsidian battle axe before, but in this video, I'm going to make one and test it out. The first step in making the axe head is to bash it with a large stone and split the piece of obsidian into two halves. One of these halves I will chip into the axe head. In the early stage of reducing this large piece of obsidian, I'm using a rock to bash pieces off at the right angle with the right amount of force. This way I can thin it down fast and get closer to an axe head shape and dimension. I'm also trying to break off as many large pieces of obsidian as possible. That way I can use these to make future projects such as arrowheads or knife blades. Because obsidian is one of the sharpest materials on earth, I place two leather pads on my legs so that I don't get cut. Each time I strike the obsidian, many flakes are knocked off. Each has a razor edge many times sharper than a surgeon's steel scalpel. This little obsidian flake is a perfect example of how sharp it can be. As you can see, it effortlessly cuts through this piece of stiff leather. At this stage, I've chipped off the exterior of the original stone, and now you can see we have a rough shape of an axe head. At this stage, I switch to using an elk antler, which will help me chip off more precise pieces as the axe head becomes more refined. As I work out the basic shape of the axe head, I am not just chipping the cutting edge, I am also shaping the backside into a triangular tip so that the battle axe will have a sharp spike. This stage is not only to shape, but it is also to thin the piece down and make it more refined as we come closer to the finished product. Because obsidian is a volcanic stone, I occasionally run into ash pockets that can affect the quality of the piece. As I'm working on the piece, I like to take a pause and make sure that the axe is coming along nicely and that it will fit into the axe handle that I carved. Though it looks cool, the shape is too bulky for this axe handle, so I have to do more chipping to slim it down. For further refinement, I'm using a smaller deer antler tool to strike pieces off of the edge and shape the axe. All of the flakes that I'm chipping off of the main piece of stone are technically waste, unless they are big enough to make something else from. The small shards are especially hazardous because they are very sharp and hard to see. These are the ones that cut me most. Just as a modern axe tapers to a thin cutting edge, I am making the end of this battle axe slim and tapered so it will chop nicely. The benefit of using a smaller deer antler to strike the stone is that the point of contact on the edge is smaller and more precise. This allows me to reduce the risk of accidentally breaking the piece in half if I miss strike or hit it too hard. At this point, I'm trying to only chip pieces off of the middle of the axe head and not the main cutting edge. This is to ensure that we can maximize the width of the chopping portion of the axe, and to make sure that it fits nicely into the handle. You'll notice I'm using a stone to dull the spot before I strike it. This is to ensure that a large piece is removed and not a small one. Just a few more taps on the edge with the large tool, and now it's time to use a deer antler tip to push hard and break obsidian flakes off the edge. This is how most of the fine shaping is achieved. This technique is called pressure flaking, and it's been used to make stone tools such as spearheads, knife blades, and arrowheads for tens of thousands of years. I like this method because it provides me with great accuracy and control. I'm able to place the tool on the edge, and I don't have to rely on hand-eye coordination for accuracy like I have to when I'm striking it.
I'm using the same leather pad that was in my lap to protect my hand as I break off these sharp flakes of obsidian. By chipping flakes off of either side of the tip, I'm sharpening and tapering it to a nice point. At this point, I realized that I had made the midsection of the axe head too thin and that it didn't sit correctly in the axe handle, so I had to come up with a backup plan. Because this is going to be a battle axe, I wanted to chip out two indentations towards the tip that will serve as barbs. This will add more character to the axe once it's done. I'm also doing the finishing touches on the tip. This is going to ensure that it's really pointy and needle sharp. Now that the back end is done, the last step is to sharpen the cutting edge with the same tool. By breaking the small shards off of the edge, it is leaving behind a fractured, razor-sharp edge of obsidian. I also added small serrations as well. The axe head is now complete, and it's ready to be attached to the handle. I really like the way this black obsidian reflects light, and the shape and sharpness of this piece turned out great. The first step is to soak some deerskin rawhide in water overnight so that it will rehydrate and become more pliable. This is the material that I will use to wrap the axe once it's glued in. The hot melt glue I'm using to hold the axe in place is a batch I made from pine sap and charcoal dust. It wasn't until the mating of the axe handle with the axe that I really got excited about the finishing of this piece. I melted the glue with the heat gun and then adjusted the glue to the appropriate form while it was still hot. To further strengthen the bond between the two, I'm using JB Weld to hold the axe head in place. I wanted the color of the adhesive to match the color of the black obsidian, so what I did was add some black adhesive dye. Then I filled up the crevice between the two pieces with the adhesive. The second day, the rawhide is now completely saturated and malleable, and it's now time to wrap it to the axe. Rawhide is perfect for wrapping the axe to the axe handle. The reason being, as it dries, it will tighten and shrink, further securing the two together. The last step on the axe is to wait and let it dry. The axe turned out really nice, and I was almost nervous to use it because it looks so cool. On the third day, the rawhide was completely dry, and now it's time to waterproof it with beeswax. It's now time to test out the axe and see how well it performs.
Thankfully, the axe didn't break and it held up nicely. Thank you so much for watching.